She used to, uh, at times in churches that we, uh, where we went to, uh, they didn't have a piano player, one wouldn't show up, and she would have to fill in. She only knew about two or three songs. That was one of them. And uh, we learned to play all five verses several times uh, uh, during uh, growing up. We played that song an awful lot. That and what a friend we have in Jesus. Um, it is good to have you this morning. Open your Bibles to Luke chapter number one. While you're turning, if you're with us uh, online, I'll just go ahead and get this out of the way. I did have an accident. My eye is black and I've got five stitches above my head. Um, I had something fall in, in the garage and hit me on the head. And uh, everybody got worried about the object instead of my head because of the knowing how hard-headed I am, I guess. But uh, it won this time. Uh, but anyway, um, we'll do our best uh, to get that out of the way and ignore that. This morning, I want to preach on something very important. I want you to listen stay with me this morning. This is Father's Day. Sometimes I will deal with the subject of fathers, and sometimes on Mother's Day, mothers, and then other times I don't. just depends on how and, and what's going on. In this country, from what I understand, and I looked at some surveys, and for I looked at one for about 10 or 12 years, and an average of 65 to 70 percent, now listen to me, 65 to 70 percent of black families, children are growing up without a father in the home. About the same number, close to the same number, is American Indians. Fifty-some percent is Hispanic. Thirty-some percent is white. Asian has about 22% growing up without a father in the home. This last week, we had a, a situation here. Some things I'll say probably won't be politically correct. But we had a situation here where, as many of you have heard, uh, a couple of our Confederate parks uh, and got statues. They had made comments that they were coming down, going to protest, and then they had some, some ideas that they would try to destroy the statues in the graveyard in Zollicoffer and, and uh, Mill Springs. Uh, I noticed the news media said that there was no legitimacy to it, but some of the federal agencies... Uh, uh, agents that was out there said that they we were on schedule they were on schedule to come down to our area and uh, there was three bus loads and uh, there was uh, several people several hundred people uh, that lined the, the roads and lined those two areas armed and uh, of course they didn't show up and they didn't come and we heard that they had passed by Somerset. Now, I said that to say that, this, we have two groups that is trying to turn our country upside down. Antifa, which is supposed to be an anti-fascist group, supposed to be non-violent, and everywhere they go, they leave violent. When you look at them, many of them are the product of either no parent or no father or a poor father. Many of them are sport, uh, privileged kids that's gone to college. They think their opinion is the only one that matters because they grew up in a household where they were allowed to think that. They didn't have the administration of a father to set them straight. And so therefore, they just think their voice is the only one that needs to be heard, and they will try to shut anybody else's voice any way that they can up if it differs from their opinion. Then you got the Black Life Matters. I read up on them and looked at them and been studying them for some time, and, and uh, originally they quoted they were a nonviolent civil group. But from the beginning, they went out marching that uh, 
pigs in a blanket fry like bacon. And uh, it was a situation where they were producing and everywhere they go, they leave behind a trail of violence. Looting, hurting. We just saw George Floyd over his death and no one that I ever heard in, in, with any sanity supported what happened to him. But in the meantime, through all these marches, 800 and some plus officers got injured. Two of them got killed and they were black. Not a word said about their deaths from, from uh, Black Lives Matters. The damage we left behind. All the different citizens that got hurt and got killed. I would look into their agenda. Their agenda has gotten to abolish prisons. Now imagine a country without any prisons. Abolish police. Now they said that Seattle was going to be a community of love this summer. Well, they had a couple murders in there yesterday. Got different groups handing out M15s and they're going to call themselves the police. Now if that's the way you want to have somebody, just step up and say, well, you're going to do as we say, as we say it. We're going to be judge, jury, and, and, uh, and executioner. That's what it's turned into there. Then the police said, well, they couldn't go in there. But anyway, they want to abolish police. They won't abolish any other institutions that they claim inflict violence upon black people. They also want to real, realign global power, power. They think America has too much power. I can imagine what we would look like if China was in control of everything. If Russia or some of these uh, 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 communist countries and, and some of these dictatorships. Then also they're anti-capitalist. They blame anyone who's rich that's worked hard and got something. They blame Wall Street, and I'm not a big fan of Wall Street. They blame anyone that works, makes a living, they think you ought to give to them. They have statements on there as well about family, which is, uh, by the way, a family is a bedrock of society. And so they have that they want to disrupt Western prescribed nuclear family structure means a mom and dad in a home. The way that God set up a home should be. They want to disrupt that. They want to break down, and by the way, the breakdown, if they want to get, if, if they want to get down to the problem in the black community, it's the breakdown of the black family. And many of the preachers, instead of going out saying, give us free this, give us free that, give us more money, they should be preaching, if you're going to have babies, get married, and then have your babies, and stay there and get a job and support those fam uh, babies, and be a father to those babies, instead of 65 to 70% of you walking away and leaving those children without a father in the home. The breakdown of the black families is the biggest problem for their social progress. It's not white privilege, it's not Asian privilege, it's not Hispanic privilege, it's the fact of their homes has been broken down. Even, even uh, President Obama's party claimed that Black Lives Matters was a radical group. President Trump said Antifa should be a domestic terrorist group. Now both of those were going to come into this community and wreak havoc. But they better stay in their liberal cities because they get out of their liberal cities. They'll find out that, that some of these other places don't receive them that well. And uh, the discipline that they haven't been taught, they'll probably be taught some when they come in some of these communities. Uh, but, and by the way, I am proud, whether you agree with me or not, I am proud of our community and people taking a stand. I may not agree with every way and everything that's said and done, but I agree that we have people with guts to put a stand up and say, you're not coming to our parks and tearing our statues down, and you're not wrecking our communities. It's not going to happen here. And if more places would do that, we would not have a problem. Now, 
I do believe that black life matters. But I believe that red lives matter, yellow lives matter, and white lives matter. They're, they're so radical that if you say all life matters, they accuse you of being a racist. And therefore they want to come against you. Now this morning I want to preach upon this thought. Fathers, all children lives matter. Did you get that? Fathers, all children's lives matter. Now, getting back to this, Black Life Matters is not interested in how many black police officers are killed throughout this process. If Black Life mattered to them and that's all that mattered to them, why doesn't black police officers' life matter? Not only that, but you never hear a word said about the hundreds of thousands of babies, black babies, that's killed by Planned Parenthood. More than any white supremacist groups, KKK and the rest of them, has ever killed in this nation. And by the way, I'm against those as well. Now, black on black homicide. You never hear a word. Now, Ricky and them used to live up in Cincinnati and over across the Rhine, every single day there was a black on black killing. As a matter of fact, just take Chicago last year. 500 uh, black youth were killed. 500. Three of those involved police. How about the other 497 black lives? Where is the cry for that and those souls that died? In the nation last year, 7,000 black lives taken. Two to three percent was involved police. That's 210 out of 7,000. How about the 6,790? Uh, if you take the highest estimates, lives that was killed and meant most of them was black on black crime or black on black killings. Why don't black life matter to them? Now, the all you hear is you just hear what we need is more money, we need free schools, free houses, and we need payments for what was done years ago with slavery. Let me let you in on a secret. Slavery was back in biblical times. It's been around as long as we know. And, and therefore, uh, they tried to play, blaze, slame, uh, blaze, place the blame and, and beginning of, of an origin of slavery with America. And I don't agree with a lot of things with the slavery. I don't agree with it. But uh, I just want you to know that it existed long before America was ever founded. And some of the founders of this nation, Thomas Jefferson, uh, George Washington, and people like that, uh, was more instrumental and cared more about this nation and did more for this nation and every single citizen of this nation, red, yellow, black, and white, than any of the whole group put together has done or any of these liberal politicians that's wanting to tear their statues down. Now... What they need, and I'm getting off this black uh, life matters, but if they want to get to the root of their cause, the main focus of their cause is they need daddies and fathers in their homes. Now, every study that you can find, children do much worse if they grow up in a home without a dad. And therefore, and by the way, Two men and two women cannot make a mom and dad. Uh, men and women are different and they parent differently. Uh, they're made different. Society has made us believe uh, that uh, a father is not necessary in a home and a home will be fine without it. Uh, but mother and father is both necessary in a home. You young girls... Before you say it and you allow someone to get you pregnant, they ought to love you enough to marry you 
and you ought to know that they're a good man that will be a good father to your children. Otherwise, put the bums on the road and let them go somewhere else. They're not worth having. We don't need more. If we want to fix the problems of America, we gotta we got to fix it where the problem is and quit calling other, everything else a problem and get down to the point of where the problem is. The major problem we have in America, other than a godless society, is a fact of a fatherless society. Now let's look a little bit further. Fathers need to be something besides someone just to make babies. They believe a lot of people, a lot of the men believe they can just enter and leave a relationship at will and no harm is done to those children. That's the most asinine, crazy, foolish statement and belief that you can have. Children are, are, are hurt uh, terribly. Uh, it all started years ago with the feminist movement. And what they did was they made a bunch of feminist men in this country that can't sit and control and, and perform the role of a dad and a father anymore in the home. Therefore, when, when the mother speaks, they move. They react. And they, they made us bleed. And, and I, I believe that if a woman and a man both does the same job, they both ought to be paid the same salary. That's not the issue. But they believe there's no difference between a man and woman. The only trouble is they have a hard problem with the fact of biology. There is a difference between the way a man and a woman is built, the way they handle, the way they think, the way they do, the way they parent. All those things are different. And when you take either one of those out of the home, that home will not be complete and there'll be issues. Several years ago, in 1998, uh, the Justice Department did a study and they looked at this. What can federal government do to decrease crime and revitalize our communities? This is what they found. They found children in fatherless homes. 63% of the suicides of children comes from fatherless homes. 90% of runaways come from homes without the father. Behavior disorders that exhibited, anger and those things, 85% comes from homes without, a, without the father. High school dropouts. 71% comes from homes without the father. Juvenile detentions in state institutions, 70% of them comes from homes without the father. Substance abuse, 75% of teens suffering from substance abuse comes from homes without the father. Aggression, 75% of rapists claim that their misplaced anger uh, uh, came because they came from uh, uh, fatherless homes. Teen pregnancy, 70% comes from fatherless homes. Now, let me say this. We are not the ones, and they can blame, uh, they can blame anyone, but we're not going into these, uh, in these inner cities and uh, causing uh, uh, women to have babies and walking away and leaving those babies. That's on their back. And any man who has a child, it's on your back. Regardless of what color you are, regardless of what race you are, it's on your back. If you have a baby, you're responsible for that baby. And you're responsible to be the father of that baby. Denzel Washington... He said this, I watched a, a thing with him, and I was impressed with what he said. He said, growing up, he had three buddies. They got to be 13, they all got in trouble. He said, but I had a mom and a dad in my home that sent me another direction when I got in trouble. They had no dad in their home. All three of those ended up in prison. Uh, uh, Morgan Freeman said, they asked him, what can we do about racism in, in America? He said, quit talking about it. Shut up and quit talking about it. And you just stir the pot all the time. And they just won't keep this lie. Now, if we want to fix the problems of America, we've got to first adjust our focus. Our focus has got to be upon the fathers. We've got to have fathers stepping up and being fathers again. We've got to anchor the faith of fathers. They need to have something that they believe in, live with, and their children are able to see in their lives. 
And they also need to anticipate the future. Fathers, God's going to judge you by what you do. And he's going to hold you accountable. And so therefore, what we need to understand, you say, well, well, father just automatically, I know so-and-so, uh, he, li- he grew up with a father. I'm not saying all children turn out perfect with fathers. But they have a great higher percentage of turning out better with a father. And by the way, these poor mothers, regardless of what color they are, I think of those black mothers in the inner cities having to work two jobs sometimes to support their home, and they can't be there to watch over their children. And they hit the streets, and that's why it's such a mess in the inner cities anymore. But the fault doesn't fall on them. They're working themselves to death. They're struggling. The fault falls with the fathers that helped help have the babies and walked off and left them. And by the way, a little uh, child support does not replace the presence and the power of presence in the home of a father. Now, the Old Testament held the position of a father in high regard. That's why God does too. That's why the fifth commandment there says, uh, honor thy father and thy mother. The word honor is a, is a word that's used to how we relate to God. Children, that's what you're supposed to do with your uh, parents. You're supposed to honor them and put them in a place of honor. And, of course, the Bible says, Children, obey your parents and the Lord in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, for this is right. But, parents, it's your responsibility to be in the Lord. And it's their responsibility to obey you. Now, the Jewish fathers... They had four things primarily that they looked at that they were responsible for. Circumcising their sons. Number two, leaving inheritance for their son. Number three, finding a wife for their son. I, I think we ought to go back to parents finding wives for your children. What do you guys think about that? You like that idea? Now, not only that, but also they were responsible to teach them a trade. Now, how many times in the Bible does it say that so-and-so had a son and he walked in the steps of his father. And by the way, when you're an AWOL father, chances are your son's going to walk in your steps. He's going to have babies. He's going to walk off and leave his babies like you walked off and left your babies. Now, God puts the responsibility of fathers in three categories. Number one, spiritually. Look if you would in Ephesians. Oh, I never did read the text, did I? Look if you would in Luke chapter 1. My bad. John the Baptist's dad, Zechariah, was visited with an angel. He was told that he was going to have a son. Now, because I've skipped this, I'm just going to go ahead and jump right to my verse. Look in verse 17. The angel said unto him, And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the what? Hearts of the fathers to the what? We need to turn the hearts of our fathers to children. Children, all children's lives are important. If you want to march on, on cities, you want to march on streets, you want to stop traffic in the road, stop it because children's lives are important and we're seeing children's lives destroyed all around us. We're seeing their souls damned because of the environments that we're raising our children in. And so therefore, somebody needs to return their hearts back to the children fathers do. If you look at Malachi chapter 4, uh, verse 6, he said, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, the heart of the children to their fathers. That's what John the Baptist was supposed to do. Look if you would in Ephesians chapter number 6 real quickly. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 4, and ye fathers, Ephesians 6, verse 4, and ye fathers provoke not your children to what? Wrath and bring them up in the nurture and admonition of God. Now, the nurture is the training that God would have you do, and the admonition is giving them instruction in what to do. But I want you to notice, we've got a bunch of kids filling their streets, running around, angry because they've been provoked to wrath by fathers, absentee, AWOL in their homes. You say, what is everybody so angry about? 
They're angry, and when they see someone with a home like you, where mom and dad is together, and, 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 dad, uh, and, and, and they're providing for the home, and growing up and raising the family, they get angry at you because of what their father didn't do. And they turn and displace anger upon you. Now, get back to this just a moment. Spiritually, God requires a man, and by the way, God holds a man accountable for the family higher than anyone else. He put him as the head of the home, and he is ultimately responsible, and he's ultimately going to have to answer to God for his position. Train up a child in the way in which it should go, and when it grows old, it will not depart from it. I did not lose one ounce of sleep worrying about my daughter and my son marching on streets and trying to take over streets and trying to uh, crucify and abolish police officers. I've not lost one second of sleep over that. You know why? They were trained better than that. They had some training. They had some instruction. They had someone that raised them, that loved them enough to be there in the home for them, loved them enough to provide for them, loved them enough to tell them I love you, loved them enough to show them I loved you, show us, I loved them enough to let them see emotion in their life, love them enough, uh, but yet in the same time, uh, they had a father that commanded that they come to church. I didn't give them an option. I let my kids make my own mind, their mind up. You're in trouble. When it come time for Sunday, it was not a question. You get dressed and we're going to church. Dad, I'm not going. Oh, yes, you are. I never had that. I had one girl over here one time, school. Uh, she come here one year in her senior year. And her mom called me one day. She got where she wouldn't come to school. Her mom called me. She's 17-year-old. She said, what do I do? She's upstairs in the bed. And she said she's not going to get up and come to school. I said, you're probably way too late for that. I said, but if my 17-year-old son was up in bed, and I told him to get ready and come to school, and he said, I ain't going to school, I'd go up there and I'd turn him and the bed and everything else upside down. He'd be out of the bed and he'd be getting dressed for school. One way or other. Like it or lump it. And by the way, you say, well, that's harsh. You may call it harsh, but I don't have to worry about him running the streets and protesting. I don't even have to worry about his kids doing it. He was taught. Also taught him about the wrong crowd. It's my job. You say, I let them pick their own friends. You're in trouble. You're given the responsibility for where and what your kids do. We're given responsibility to teach them obedience. You know why a, a Tifa is a bunch of sport brats running up and down the road destroying everything? They didn't have a deck that set them on fire when they got out of line. Had they done that, they'd had some respect. They'd had respect for authority. They'd had respect for our president. They'd have respect for police officers. And yes, there's some bad apples in everything that you go into. And listen, if there's a bad apple uh, that abuses someone in a police department, he ought to be uh, uh, persecuted and he ought to be uh, tried the same way anybody else should be. But just because one guy put, puts his neck on someone and calls him quit breathing does not mean that all the police force is guilty of that crime and that issue. We'd be in a terrible place without police. But listen to me. We were taught respect. I, I, never dream, I never dreamed of going down and trying to burn all the, all the buildings on the street, especially in my own community where I had to shop. I had more sense than that. And by the way, when I was growing up, I had to work if I wanted some money, and by the time it got time, I didn't feel like running the streets all night long burning things and tearing it down. Socially, God has given you fathers and us fathers the job of socially protecting your children. In the Bible, most fatherless homes were of widows and of orphans, not of low lives that walks away from their families and leaves them high and dry. Yes, I said low lives. 
And I didn't get that off of President Trump's tweet, by the way. I thought that before he ever tweeted it. Economic. We as fathers are to provide. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8 says this. A man that will not provide for his own household is worse than an infidel. You won't support your own children. You ain't got room to stand up and say nothing. I don't want you to tell me what I'm doing wrong and what I should be doing and how I should be doing. Listen, if you're too sorry to support your own children, I, I'm not interested in nothing that you've got to say. Because you got no answers to help the matter out. Fathers, all children's lives matter. Every one of them. Now, I want to leave you on a positive note. Fathers, it's our responsibility to be committed to our children. Listen. I still got, they don't like to hear this, but they're still my babies. I still love them. And when they have a need, I drop what I need. I, I, I'm right there with them. I'll help them any way I can when they're trying to do the right thing. And I'm still here for them. I'm here for their children. And I'll be until the day I die. But you are, when you have a children, because all children's lives matter, you've got a, you've got a commitment all the rest of your life. Know that? You need to learn to know your children. Know who they are. Spend time with them. Spend some time with your children. I don't care what you're doing. If it's fishing, I don't care. If it's walking down the road, if it's playing ball, whatever you got to do. Spend time with your children. Get to know them. If you don't spend time with them, somebody will. Consistent in attitude. In discipline. Don't go off on a rage, dads, and tear into your children. Be consistent. Be consistent in the way you deal with issues. Teach them consistency in their life. They'll be a lot more comfortable. I've been in environments where I didn't know, didn't know what to expect when somebody would come in, how they'd treat them. I, I used to work for a guy, and he'd come in one day, he'd give you the world. Come in the next day, he'd fire you in a heartbeat and just be mad about the whole world. And that's a bad way of going. And listen, that's a bad way to raise your home. Be consistent. Not only that, protect and provide for your children. Fathers, you need to protect them. Provide. Love the mothers, the children. Let them see that love. Let them see that emotion. So let them see compassion. Be active listeners. Listen. And spiritually equip your children. Again, I'm going to leave you these three things. We need to adjust our focus. Adjust your focus or you'll lose your children. And if you're going to adjust your focus and you want to do what's right for your children, you got to also anchor your faith. I'm not talking about be hot one day and cold the next. That's what the Laodicean church is. I'm talking about anchor your faith. Let them know where you're going to be. Let them know what's going on. Let them know what you believe. Let them know you're consistent. When, I, when we was raised, somebody said, why does your family come to church so regularly, because that's the way we were taught to do. We were taught that way. We had examples before us. And last, folks, we have to anticipate our future. Fathers, the future is that you'll stand before God one of these days and you have to give an account for every child that you had. All children's lives matter. Amen. Let's stand. Good song, if you would, brother.
You may say, Preacher, that was that's pretty hard. Listen, I wish that message was preached all around the, uh, the country. I wish in every church this morning they would preach that message. Father's Day, we need to quit by blaming everybody else for the problem. And we need to come back to the structure of the home. That is the concrete of society for our home. Maybe God's still in your heart. You need to come. However God may 